And we are good. Good morning, Real Closers. Good morning. We're back. Power hour every Monday, 8.30-ish. Uh, we had some technical, <laughs> some technical difficulties today. Uh, yeah, uh, we're almost on time. Almost there. Almost there. Close almost enough. there. Close enough, guys. How's it going, Gustavo? Doing good. Doing good. Glad to be here in the Real Closers group. Uh, you know, just try to add as much value as you can. Uh, we got a good topic today, right? It's one that I see come up a lot in the discussions, in the forum, uh, you know, people posting, asking different, qu different questions are on the same topic. I saw a question last week about the dialer. What dialer should I use for this, pro for this project? What's the best data? What's the, you know, there's a lot of different things people are asking, but the real problem they're trying to solve, the actual problem they're trying to solve is, hey, how do I get started prospecting homeowners? Like I, people are, people are, there's some people, a lot more than, than a few months ago. Let me just tell you that. A lot more people are thinking about this than it was three, four, five, six months ago. And they're thinking it might be a good time to like dust off the phone, right? And, and pick it up and try making some calls, see if I can talk to some people that might be thinking of buying or selling in the next few months. And the reason for that is like, number one, in case you haven't noticed, market is shifting, guys. Like there's a big shift going on. Uh, it started to get really pronounced in June, continued into July. You know, I haven't seen August numbers yet, but I'm pretty sure that the trend is going to continue. I'm seeing it in the marketplace. I'm seeing it in the marketplace. And I have some insider knowledge about this, right? I, I told folks last week, um, you know, Power ISA had a, a, a record-breaking month in sales in August, right? Record-breaking. And a lot of folks are having, you know, challenges with their campaigns. A lot of folks are, oh, my good, you know, money's tight. So I got a lot of, I got mixed messages. People are, like, really struggling right out there right now because the market's shifting. But a lot of people getting into the prospecting game, a lot of people. And the reason for that is, I feel, is that as the market balances out, as we see more inventory start to creep up in a lot of these markets, as the days on market for these, a lot of these uh, areas starts to creep up, the biggest thing that I'm seeing is that the same thing is happening for the expired, the same thing is happening for the first sale by owner, and the same thing is happening to mom and pop, you know, the, the sellers, or, you know, not mom and pop, you know, the regular homo sellers, they're thinking, you know, the market, the market's changing. And if they have a need to sell, a motivation to sell, people are selling homes every day, guys. It doesn't change, right? Even the estimates, the updated estimates for this year, that we're still going to sell 5 million homes this year. I mean, that's not going to change. It's down from 6 point something million last year. But even the most conservative estimates say we're going to sell 5 million, even more than 5 million homes this year. That's a lot of properties being bought and sold every single day, right? 10 million sites, right, out there. That's still happening, right? So people need more help now than they needed six months ago to navigate this really weird market we're seeing, right? We're seeing like the unemployment numbers look really positive, but inflation, you know, hasn't really gone down that much. And then interest rates are, are through the roof, you know, compared to where they were a year ago. And like, are we, are we in a recession? Are we not? We're, I saw someone describe this on Twitter really, really well saying we're in that moment where for a lot of these commodities, call them used cars, homes, uh, and other parts of the economy, no one's really sure what things are worth right now, right? We're, we're in the transition of, should prices be going down? But they're not really going down. They're still higher than they were a year ago, but they're not accelerating like they were a month ago. So where the hell are we at, right? There's a lot of confusion in the marketplace, a lot of anxiety in the marketplace. All of this to say that the consumer needs a professional agent more now than six months ago, than a year ago, than two years ago, than three years ago. They need a professional telling them what's actually happening on the ground. They don't need to take, they don't need a, a PhD in economics to tell them what's going on in the whole world. They don't need that. They need to know what's going on in your community, right? How many actives are out there pending, sold in your category? That's another thing, that, you know, Robert. It's like these people, some of these, you see these, these, these crazy headlines happening in the West, California, Boise, you know, uh, uh, Phoenix, and Denver getting, getting hit on the nose. That's not the whole story for the whole country. And that's not the whole story for every segment of the home sales, starter homes, mid homes, move up homes, luxury properties. So you got to really slice and dice it to see what's actually happening in your area, right? And as things start to settle down, I think more and more people are going to need the advice of a professional. And one of the best ways to talk to a professional right away is through prospecting, to have more real estate conversations on a daily basis. There's no better way to do it. How do you get started with that? Number one, you need a strategy. Like what, because prospecting is a million different things, right? I'm going to start on a spectrum. The easiest one to start with and the most challenging one to start with, okay? I'm going to go on that spectrum. So you, got, you can decide. And a lot of folks that have ISA, spoiler alert, 
uh, they start on the easier side of the spectrum because that's where an ISA can have the most value faster, right? On the, on the easier side of the spectrum. I would say that outbound prospecting for, for homeowners starts with circle prospecting, right? Which is calling around a specific listing, uh, a listed home, just sold home, just closed home, whatever it is, uh, or, just, or just a high value geo farming, right? Just targeting a neighborhood and calling around, trying to find someone who might be thinking of selling. If it's just sold, hey, we just sold this property, I have these many buyers still looking in that area. I need some, I need some, some more homes to sell them, right? Or guess what? We just, we just helped this person sell for this much money. Who else might be thinking of selling in that area? You got to give them, entice them with something. You, you can't just call and ask, do you want to sell, right? That's not going to work, right? You've got to give them some exciting news, something interesting, and then ask, who do they know that might be thinking of selling real estate or buying any real estate in the next few months, right? That's, that's a very straightforward script, very, relatively simple to learn. I'd say the next step after that are what we call some of these specialty lists. Downsizers, you've got uh, folks that are thinking of like absentee owners, right? People that have own property in other state, might be thinking of selling, might not, right? The, the, the eviction moratoriums are all but gone everywhere, right? So a lot of these landlords are kind of figuring out what the hell they're going to do nowadays. But they, they probably had a terrible 2021. 2022 might be better, but they might be actually thinking of selling because they might think we're at the top of the market. That's what a lot of people think, right? So use that to your advantage, right? A lot of people are thinking, man, I want to get a piece of this, uh, this market before things go down even further. There's a lot of anxiety around that, right? You can tap into that for a lot of these absentee owners. And these specialty lists, downsizers, absentee owners, right? The, the, the script is actually very straightforward. Like for an absentee owner, hey, Mr. You know, uh, a homeowner, I see you're the owner of 150 Main Street. Have you thought of putting that on the market and getting highest and best offer? You, you have to say that because these absentee owners get bombarded by wholesalers. They get bombarded with investors. But agents rarely call them, actually. They rarely call them. So you got to explain you're an agent. Like, hey, I know I'm trying to get you the highest and best. Okay, that's, that's the deal. Okay, that's awesome. Then the next thing you got to do, the next step on the spectrum, I would say, are what we call the old expired listing. Old expired listings. Why? Expired seems to be hard. Old expired, once you're past the, the, the two, three month mark, the six month mark, the one year mark, things change. Expireds aren't in combat mode anymore, right? Something happened to take the property off the market if they haven't sold it yet. You gotta check that, right? And a lot of these data sources, Red X, Vulcan 7, Land Voice, they do great at that and filtering out the listings that aren't active, that haven't really sold recently, but are still aged expires. You call them up, and it's almost like a circle prospecting call. People don't know this, right? They kind of assume that any expired is the same. They're not at all, right? Six months down the line, a year down the line, it's a completely different conversation versus an expired that has been uh, uh, back on the market for five minutes, right? Like it's a very different experience for the seller as well. So calling those, I'd say, is the middle of the spectrum. The, the higher end of the spectrum that takes more skill, more practice, hot, like, like more advanced objection handling, are expired, and I would put it at the very top for sale by owner, right? Because the expired listing is challenging because you need to get the owner's attention and you have to differentiate, your, differentiate yourself immediately, right? But I, if you want more information on expired, check out John D. Smith's uh, a chatty ad with Roberto uh, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah. Uh, that was amazing, right? That guy is killing it with expired and physical as well. Uh, so get some tips on there. There's some great education right here in real closer, so check it out. Uh, but I would say expired is hard. But they've listed before. They've worked with an agent. It just didn't go the way they planned. So you got to have a conversation. Get their attention, number one. Number two, find out what the issue was. Location, condition, price. One of the three, two of the three, or maybe all three, are, are combining to not get that property sold. Build some rapport with this person to, so they can give you the right to ask which one of those is the problem. And find out and, and, and take control of that situation. Right? That's, the, that's the expired situation in a nutshell. FISBO is different, right? So FISBO assumes they don't need a real estate agent. They assume realtors don't do anything anyway. They assume their property is going to sell by itself. So that's what's been happening to their neighbors and their friends. They might have done three FISBO properties in the last year. It went fine. That's the starting point, right, for a FISBO. So a FISBO is a longer term play. Even the, the, the recent published FISBOs, it's at least a one to two week play. Because the, 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 fundamentally, the owner has to give up and accept the fact that it's not gonna sell on their own, on its own, by itself. They're just gonna take a bunch of bids, have a huge bidding war, just gonna pick the highest and best, and it's gonna go smooth, no problem. Once they give up on that illusion, they might be open to talking to you. But it's important to call them from day one, introduce yourself, 
add value to them and add to the business, but don't force it. If you don't want it, that's fine. I'll be checking in to see how things are going. Every time you check in though, you've got to be helping them out somehow. Tips on the pitches, tips on presenting the property, feedback on some of the buyer experiences. Some of these are nightmares, right? Because who preys on FISBOs? More savvy buyers in the FISBO a lot of times. Investors prey on some of these FISBOs. They're trying to find deals. And off-market properties, which a FISBO technically is, are great opportunities to get off-market deals if they can put one, they try to put one over the owner, right? So they have these, usually FISBOs have terrible experiences with their showings and their buyers because they're trying to take advantage of them the fact that they're off the market, right? So help them out with that. Be a resource for that, right? And then by the time you hit week number two, you got to go for the business. You got to show them, hey, I'm ready to help you guys out, right? When can we sit down? I'll take a look at the property. I'll give you suggestions. And if you don't, and if you don't like what I'm offering, no problem, right? I want to show you my flexible commission schedule. Fizzbos eat that up. Flexible commission schedule. What does that mean? Google it. Make one up, right? What happens if they, if they still sell the property on their own to one of their old leads, they get so much, they have to pay so much commission. If you find a buyer, they have to pay this much commission. If you find the, if you find, a, a, if you double end the, pro, the, the, the deal, you get this, this much commission. Like, make it flexible, guys. Negotiate with them, right? If you give them a ton of value, it gives them some flexibility on that commission. You got that listing. It's yours for the taking. It's yours for the taking. If you show them value and that they don't have to pay top dollar regardless, that's what they're concerned about. Like, this is not going to take, I mean, oh my goodness, you're not going to do anything and I'm going to have to pay all this money. If I don't do anything, you pay less money. How about that, right? Give them that guarantee, right? John talked about this. He said, hey, and if you want to cancel any time, you don't owe me a dime. I'm going, to, I'm going to front all this money. And if you still think this is not worth it, I'm not helping you out. If it, give me 30 days. And after 30, you don't feel, then let's, then let's cancel it. You don't owe me anything. Giving them those guarantees is a game changer for them. It's a game changer, right? So I would say do that. But once you pick a strategy, Trust me on this, that the dialer, the data source is, are, it's just detail. They're minor details. Number one, you got to know what you're getting yourself into. Circle prospects, downsizers, for rent by owners, absentee owners, old expireds, new expireds, and new for sale by owners, right? Look at that spectrum. Be realistic on where your, where your skills are. And if, guys, if you guys want some training on expires and FISBOs, we should have some here in the group. Drop a comment below, guys. Why don't you drop a comment below um, if you're interested in getting some more training specifically on converting expired and FISBO listings. I, I'd love to have that here in the group for you guys. But who wants it? Drop a comment below if you want some of that. Um, but that's what I got to say, Roberto. I think that those are the key things uh, you have to be ready. To get started with prospecting homeowners, you got to pick a strategy, right? The dialer and the data source. Trust me that that's like, you, it's hard to go wrong with that end of the spectrum. You can really go wrong if you don't know where you, or your skill set is and where to get started with outbound prospects. And like if you're on the fence, right? If you're on the fence, this month is when you start getting out of that place. Start planning because October, November, December is about all executing. You're not going to get deals exactly. right away. Homes are correct. Still, and home, even if you get that listing, you know, within the next week, Homes are still sitting for about 30 to 45 days on this, in this, in this side of, in, you know, in this area where we are right now. So it's yeah. like, you're not yeah. going to get business for another 30 days, 45 days, maybe, maybe less, you know, depending on the property. So you got to start now. And if you, yeah. and again, this is not just a few calls a day, right? This is going to take constant calling, constant being on the phone, picking up that phone, making those calls. If you need additional help, as you know, Gustavo can provide that. We'll drop the link. And absolutely absolutely man thanks so much gustavo and yeah i mean hopefully people comment you know let's put some training and let's do actually absolutely. if people want it people you gotta ask for it though i am challenging people right you gotta gotta do a little bit of work a little bit of keyboard exercise right finger exercise uh drop a comment if you want that training if you want it we'll deliver it okay sounds good man thank you so much again for being here again this monday we'll be back next monday have a good one all right thanks everybody all right bye